the model that we're going to use for the labor market is all about two decisions uh, that the firm is making. So on the one hand, the firm is making their wage decision, right? Their wage setting decision. And that comes from chapter six. And so firms are basically deciding, all right, how much do I have to pay workers in order to get them to provide the uh, profit maximizing level of effort? Um, because we can't write these complete contracts, right? So we have these incomplete contracts. And so I have to figure out the wage that will motivate workers enough to provide them with enough employment rent so that they don't want to lose their job uh, in order to maximize my profits. And then on the other hand is the price setting decision. And so this is comes from chapter seven, where firms are setting some markup above their cost that's based on you know, how much competition they face, what's the elasticity of demand they're facing, uh, and they're doing that to maximize their profits too, right? So remember that the, the cost of production is coming from the wage setting curve, at least in part, um, and the price setting decision is also then coming from the demand curve. And so it's these two decisions working together that are going to bring us to our uh, labor market equilibrium. So one of the most important things to realize here is that what's important is the real wage. And so this is going to be important both for firms, right? What they care about is really how much they have to pay uh, workers in comparison to the price level. And that should be important for workers too. Although as we'll talk about, a lot of times workers focus more on their nominal wage, just measured in dollars, and don't worry about how much stuff that uh, wage can actually buy, right? So that's the difference. The nominal wage is measured in dollars. The real wage is measured in, in goods. Um, and so each firm is deciding on its price, its wage, and how many people to hire. And then, you know, adding all of those up across the economy gives us total employment and the real wage, right? Because that price uh, in the bottom of the real wage is not just one firm's price, but it's uh, the average price of all goods and services in the economy that firms are charging. So if we think about the, the chain of events of firms' decisions, then we can think, all right, they're deciding on the nominal wage. That's going to depend on other firms' prices and wages. And it's also going to determine, it's also going to come from the unemployment rate. And why is the unemployment rate important here? It's because, remember, the unemployment rate uh, influences how much employment rent workers get because when the unemployment rate is high it's going to be harder to find a new job if you lose the one you have so your employment rent is higher whereas when the unemployment rate is really low it's going to be much easier to find a new job if you lose your own and so the employment rent is lower and so firms are going to have to pay a higher wage uh, when the unemployment rate is lower and a lower wage when the unemployment rate is higher then they're going to set their price. That's going to depend on their own nominal wage, right? Because that's one of their costs of production. And it's also going to depend on the demand for their own product. That's going to determine uh, what their markup is. Then they're going to determine how much to produce, right? The output, what is, uh, that's based on the optimal price and the demand curve, right? When remember, if you're facing a downward sloping demand curve, then choosing a point on that demand curve is both choosing a price and an output. Uh, because you can't sell more than what's on the demand curve at that price. And then based on how much you want to produce, that's going to determine how many workers you need, right? So uh, the output then influences how many people are going to be working at that firm based on that firm's own production function. And so this will give us our wage setting curve where we have the proportion of the working age population from zero to one, although really it goes from 0 0.5 to one in this graph, and then the real wage on the vertical axis. And it's the real wage necessary at each uh, employment level or unemployment level uh, to get workers to work hard and well. Now, so this is a little bit tricky graph because it's employment is going from left to right and unemployment is going from right to left. And so, you know, if we're here at a, a high wage, then that's a low unemployment rate, right? That says it's an unemployment rate of 5%. If we're here at a lower real wage, that's an unemployment rate of 12%. And remember, the reason that we can do that is that uh, the employment rent is higher when the unemployment rate is 12%, so you don't have to pay as much. 
uh, to workers, whereas the employment rate is lower uh, when the unemployment rate is uh, is lower because it's easier to find a new job. So you have to pay more in order to get workers uh, to work hard. So how do we get there? Well, it's really just from the best response function, right? The best response function shifts when the unemployment rate changes. So it shifts to the right for a lower unemployment rate. It shifts to the left for a higher unemployment rate. And that determines uh, the wage that will be paid. And so you can see at a higher unemployment rate at point A, this point A corresponds to this point A in the wage setting curve. And then similarly, point B in the uh, shifted right best response function with the lower unemployment rate corresponds to this point B in the wage setting curve. So this is a, an estimated wage curve from US data going from 1979 to 2013. It basically takes a weighted average of lots of different places in the country. It adjusts for inflation. So this is based on uh, 2013 dollars. And you can see that uh, the unemployment rate, just to match our model, goes from zero on the right to 20% on the left. We've never had a national unemployment rate uh, of 20% in this time frame. The highest it's been nationally was about 11% in the early 1980s. Um, but locally, we've had higher unemployment rates, so we can estimate that. Um, and you can see we get this upward sloping wage setting curve, just like in the model. So that, that gives us a little more confidence that this might be a reasonable model to be using. So remember how firms come up with their profit maximizing price. The optimal price depends uh, on demand elasticity and the point on the demand curve that maximizes uh, profits. And so if we are at point B, right, and we're selling at point, uh, we're selling at price P star and we're producing at Q star and the wage is W, then workers are getting this amount. That's the wage bill, this rectangle here, W times Q star. Uh, and revenue is this amount, P star times Q star. And so if we're going to usually simplify things and sort of ignore capital when we're talking about the labor market, and so this part would be the cost for the firms and the income for the workers, and the rectangle on top of it would be the profit for the firms. And so that's how we're dividing up uh, the output. right? And so that's what this uh, line is saying, is that uh, if we're selling... Uh, at say $20, $20 per unit and the nominal wage uh, is $15, then the profit would be $5, right? And so output per worker is divided up into real profit plus the real wage once we divide everything through by the price. So how do we get uh, the price setting curve. So all that we have to remember is that, all right, for, workers are going to produce a certain amount. We're going to call this lambda. This letter here is, is lambda, the Greek letter lambda. And that's going to depend on technology and the production function of the firm. And then there's going to be some wage, right? And so if we take the nominal wage, capital W, and divide it by the price level, we get the real wage, which will usually be a, a little w. And so workers are producing this much. They're getting paid this much, which means that uh, firms are earning a profit of the difference there. So the way we look at this price setting curve is to think about, all right, well, we have this wage coming from uh, the demand curve and the wage setting curve. And that gives us our, our price setting curve, right? This is the place that will maximize profits for firms. That's going to depend on how much competition there is in the economy. It's going to depend on the role of labor unions. It's going to depend on uh, the role of trade. It's going to depend on a lot of things, um, but it's not going to depend on the level of employment, right? So the wage setting curve depends on the level of employment, but the price setting curve does not. All right, so that's what this just says, right? It's C, you know, if we were here, the wage would be too low and the markup too high. The, the markup, remember, is the difference between how much the worker produces and how much uh, they are paid. So we're going from top to bottom rather than bottom to top. Uh, if we were at point A, the real wage would be too high and the markup too low. And so the firms would raise their price uh, and output would fall. 
At point B, we're at an equilibrium where the markup is appropriate uh, based on the demand curve, and workers are getting paid their uh, equilibrium real, real wage, and firms are earning their equilibrium real profit. So how do we get to the equilibrium? Well, the, the labor market equilibrium is just where the price setting curve and the wage setting curve intersect. And so you can see that the real wage is actually determined by the price setting curve. It's just a horizontal line. Um, but the unemployment rate is determined by the wage setting curve, right? And so where the two intersect, that gives us our real wage. And reading from right to left gives us our unemployment rate, right? And that's a Nash equilibrium. And if you don't know what a Nash equilibrium is, it just means it's a mutual best response. Workers and firms are doing the best they can based on how what the other one is doing. So that's what this next uh, slide says is that all parties are doing the best they can, right? So workers can't do any better, firms can't do any better, employment is the highest it can be given the wage, and those who have jobs can't improve their situation by either asking for higher pay or working less hard, and those who do not have jobs but would like to work cannot persuade firms to hire them by accepting lower wages because firms would be worried that they wouldn't work hard enough based on the best response uh, curve. 